I would describe the current state of the insurance industry, industry with regards to the flood peril is uh, what just hit me. And in the last few years, there's been uh, several instances of uh, what would be considered unprecedented events that, while maybe unprecedented, should not have been unforeseen. So the insurance industry is kind of in a, uh, a catch-up mode with regards to applying technology to underwriting the peril. Um, my concern is that the insurance industry will then take this technology without really understanding it and understanding the limitations of it and use this as their underwriting model. One of the, uh, I think, great breakthroughs in the last uh, decade with regards to CAT underwriting is the use of geocoding and, and hazard mapping. Uh, it's greatly improved our ability to underwrite the peril of flood because flood is the most uh, geographically specific flood peril, much more so than any other perils, whether it's earthquake or, or wildfire. Um, but you have to understand the limitations of the geocoding technology and the, and the errors in mapping. I have a, one client of a, a small uh, regional company that every year they suffer flood losses and every year he uh, calls me in and asks uh, me to help them out and explain why these losses occurred. And this is uh, a guy that I've known for about 20 years, so we've kind of grown up in, in the industry uh, together. And uh, he came up to me and said, hey, Tim, uh, we've, we're going to, we've got this covered now. He goes, we've got a new technology and it's going to guarantee us a certain percentage of uh, hits within, with various degrees of accuracy in order to map our flood exposure. And we started talking about, well, what is accuracy? And I mentioned to him that I had an intern do a study of about 400 locations, and we used two of the most popular uh, geocoders to find out how accurate they were. The margins of error on these 400, one of the most accurate was 256 foot margin of error, and the other one was 353 feet. And he goes, well, I don't know what locations you looked up. Uh, you know, how do I know? Uh, you know, what validity we have here? And I said, well, I think that's a pretty credible, uh, you know, uh, sample size, 400. But I just threw this out. I said, come up with the most famous uh, address in the United States. What would you think it is? And he just shot right back, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And we got on his computer, uh, put up 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, and we found out that the margin of error for that was 300 feet. Now, 300 feet might not seem like a lot, but in terms of flood underwriting, when the difference uh, your house can flood and your neighbors doesn't flood, 300 feet is a huge uh, error. The three main considerations when looking to underwrite flood, I think, are to, uh, one, be aware of the new technology that's available uh, to better help in underwriting the peril, but also to, not just to be aware of it, but to also understand the technology and understand the limitations of the technology. I also think um, you should be able to differentiate between uh, different risks within the same flood zone. You know, for example, that there is good zone A and bad zone A, and good zone C and bad zone C. Also, I think you have to consider loss expectancies, the susceptibility of the contents. Uh, a blanket approach to underwriting the peril of flood isn't going to work. My name is Tim Pappas. I've been in the insurance industry for 27 years, the last 19 of which have been at Generate.